Voters in New York City begin to head to the polls this weekend for early voting in the primary for mayor. The field of Democratic candidates is as diverse as the Big Apple itself. According to a recent poll, current Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams leads the field over former presidential candidate Andrew Yang and former sanitation commissioner Catherine Garcia. Among the group of candidates looking to succeed term-limited Bill de Blasio is Sean Donovan. He's a former secretary of housing and urban development and served as White House budget director under President Barack Obama. Sean Donovan joins me now from New York City. Hi, Sean. Welcome. Great to see you. So this is obviously a crowded field of candidates. Early voting starts on Saturday, and the latest polling does not have you in a favorable spot. Why do you think you can make your case in time? Well, Tanya, first of all, it's great to see you. Thank you for having me on today. Here's what we know about mayor's races in New York. Uh, they break late. More than half of New Yorkers are undecided at this point. And the other thing is we have ranked choice voting for the very first time. And uh, what I'm seeing is very broad support across the city uh, in second, third choice votes that will help me win under ranked choice. But the other thing that we see in the polling is that housing and homelessness are the top issues for New York, along with safety. And as someone who spent my entire career as a lifelong New Yorker working to make housing more affordable, working to bring down homelessness, I'm really hearing that message resonating with people across the city as I've been in every borough. So I'm, I'm encouraged by the momentum that we have. And with so many New Yorkers still undecided, uh, I really believe we're going to win this race in two weeks. I would love to hear more about your ideas uh, of ta for tackling homelessness. And also, uh, one of the main pitches of your campaign is the so-called 15-minute neighborhood, where everything a New Yorker could need is within a 15-minute walk. Um, what exactly can a mayor do to create these sorts of neighborhoods, and where in the city are they most needed? Well, Tanya, first of all, on homelessness, we've seen homelessness increased dramatically under Mayor de Blasio. We have more homeless folks in New York now than since the depression. And, and this was the issue that called me to public service in the first place. As a kid, I saw homelessness exploding on our streets. I started volunteering in a homeless shelter and I worked, went to work for a nonprofit helping to rebuild those neighborhoods I'd seen burning as a kid to get people affordable housing. And my experience when I led housing in the city and when I led housing for President Obama, we dramatically decreased homelessness. In fact, working with Michelle Obama, we ended veteran homelessness in 80 cities around the country. And the way you do that is first, keep people in their homes, get them the assistance they need to afford where they're currently living. Second, we need to not put a giant Band-Aid on this problem with shelters and hotels, like Mayor de Blasio's tried to do, but actually get people into housing, what's called supportive housing. And you know, one of the reasons why people don't feel safe in New York right now, we've had an explosion of mental illness on our streets and on our subways. Supportive housing, housing that combines permanent long-term housing with services for mental health, for substance abuse, is what solves homelessness. And particularly for those who have really serious mental illness. And that's what we're seeing on the streets. That's what we need a mayor to be able to do is to solve homelessness in this city, not just to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. So that's something that I am absolutely uh, prepared to do and have a record to prove it. And in terms of these you know, 15 minute neighborhoods that you're also proposing, is that connected to this uh, notion of solving homelessness? And, and further, these neighborhoods would obviously require the support of a robust transportation system. And as you know, the state controls the Metropolitan Transit Authority. The MTA board has very little power over its operations or funding. That's mostly up to Albany. Um, so how do you think that you could both, you know, develop these 15-minute neighborhoods, support the transportation system around them if the power is in Albany. Um, what is the, the relationship there? Yeah. So, Tanya, first what I would say is if you look at where New York City is right now, New Yorkers understand we don't need to just repair and rebuild the city from COVID. We also need to solve the pandemic of inequality that we had before COVID hit. Right now, you can predict the life chances, even the life expectancy of a child 
by the zip code they grow up in. And, and that's wrong. And so my 15 minute neighborhood plan is aimed at solving that. Here's what it does. It says, let's change the way we plan and invest in the city so that every New Yorker has within 15 minutes of their front door, a great school for their kids, a job that sustains their family, the healthcare that they need within just a short walk from their home. That would have made a huge difference in COVID. And to really achieve that, we need somebody, look, I'm an architect and a planner for my whole career. I know how to make a difference in our neighborhoods. That's what I've been doing for 30 years. But the other thing that we're gonna need is real investment. Tanya, I like to say this is like a new New Deal moment in New York City. Fiorella LaGuardia was the most transformational mayor in the city's history because he was mayor during the New Deal, had a deep relationship with FDR, who was president at the time, and brought huge investment into the city. I'm in a unique position. I, I've worked in the trenches with President Biden, with nearly every leader in the administration, and with leaders on both sides of the aisle in Congress to bring funding to New York. That's what we're gonna need at this new New Deal moment to really change our neighborhoods and actually to improve our transportation as well. Huge investment from the infrastructure bill could be the thing that really brings New York City's transportation into the 21st century. All right, and you've also made fighting climate change a centerpiece of your campaign. And some believe one way to do this is by reducing carbon emissions through cutting down on the number of cars in New York City. By the end of your first term, what would you do to give New York's streets back to its residents? Such an important question. And look, in this moment of crisis with the pandemic, we've seen that we can actually change our streets. We could bring what are now 20th century, maybe even 19th century streets into the 21st century with new technologies. One of the things I'm really encouraged by is the chance to bring much faster bus service to every neighborhood. Um, we need to improve our subways, but we also know that there's so many New Yorkers who don't live within a few minutes walk of a, of a subway stop. Let's bring real bus rapid transit. You know, Tanya, one of the things that we haven't really done in New York is use technology like other cities around the country and around the world. Think about this. As a bus goes down the street, you can install technology that would make sure that bus never waits at a red light. It's called traffic signal priority. We're only using it on five routes out of hundreds of bus routes around the city. Let's really expand bus service, make it faster, bring real bus rapid transit. That's just one of many things I would do to make sure that we're putting people uh, in, in at the front of our streets and really making sure they can move around our city quickly. The last thing I would say though, Tanya, to go back to your question earlier, you're absolutely right that we need a mayor who can get cooperation from Albany. Um, I have a real plan to do that, not a soundbite to just take over the MTA, which we couldn't ever afford, but to get more board seats, to get more control. And look, here's my history. When President Obama asked me to lead the recovery after Sandy, I worked very effectively with the uh, governor, with our state legislature. I brought $60 billion to New York City to help rebuild. That's the kind of cooperation I can bring. That's what I've done during my career. And that's what New Yorkers are looking for, is a mayor who will not you know, act like a toddler in the sandbox with our governor, but actually get big things done for the future of our city. All right, well, New York City mayoral candidate, Sean Donovan, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. John, you're great to be with you. Thanks so much.